I wanted to conclude the course with showing you some clips and give you some updates of some current films in the 2010s in sports films. Uh, let's begin with a sport that nobody in America seems to care about or watches, but yet it still seems to be a great subject for sports films. Yes, you've learned well in this course, it's boxing. The boxing movie doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Just in the 2010s alone, we've seen a whole lot of fists flying in the ring. Let's begin with the most successful of the newer boxing films. And now I think I must admit that I really liked Rocky Balboa, even though I didn't think that I would. And I was a little apprehensive when I heard that the movie Creed was going to be produced about Apollo Creed's son. I had very little interest. Uh, but then I saw that Michael B. Jordan was going to be starring in the role of Creed. And then, of course, I was all in. I'm a big Michael B. Jordan fan. Jordan is one of my favorite young actors, and he doesn't disappoint in this movie either. In this film, he's Apollo Creed's son, Adonis Johnson. He was born after Apollo's death in the ring to Rocky Balboa and not to Apollo's wife. He's trying to find his way in the world, and he turns to bo boxing and seeks out Rocky Balboa for help as his trainer. Sylvester Stallone was nominated for the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in this role, and Jordan could easily have been nominated for the Best Actor category as well. The director, Ryan Coogler, is a young African-American director, and he was a big Rocky fan growing up. He told his father after seeing a Rocky movie that one day he would direct a Rocky movie himself. He had a sales pitch with Stallone along the line. He wrote a script himself. This is the only uh, of the Rocky movies that was not scripted by Stallone. So he met with Stallone and had a one-hour sales pitch about the film, Creed, and Stallone wasn't really impressed at the time uh, when he pitched the film Creed. However, a real life, real life tragedy struck Stallone. His son, Sage, died of a heart attack. Stallone decided to do Creed based on the fact that it was a father-son relationship, and he used the film as part of the healing process. See, I come from Mississippi. I am serious. This is old school. You should be able to grab one of these birds. 30 seconds? Ended up yeah. in New York City. your dreams. Well, I had my first come on, child. you call that fast? I named the boy now I see him. All the boys call him now. I told him as a young uh, again. He'll be I the thought you were fast. <laughs> Quit the school. No. Get them legs moving. A little harder, a little faster. Keep up the pace. Keep going. I'm still number one every day real. Control your Build slowly. Walk, build, 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 go! That bell don't mean school's out, Donnie. Keep going. That bell means hell. Just go get the chicken. It's not that big a deal. Come here, come here. Oh, oh, oh my God. It's pretty good. Chickens are slowing down. Creed grossed more than $100 million on a $35 million budget. The other recent boxing films had high aspirations for award season two, but they didn't really connect with critics or the crowds. Southpaw is a film directed by Antoine Fuqua. You've probably known him from his other great successes in the past, such as Training Day with Denzel Washington, Olympus Has Fallen, and two more Denzel uh, hookups, The Equalizer and Magnificent Seven. In Southpaw, Jake Gyllenhaal's character loses his wife in a car accident and then his daughter to family services. He seeks solace in his boxing career. The more you get hit, the harder you fight. I get it. I don't want to hear this right now. Only now you're taking way too many hits hey, before you get off. Listen to me. This is a good night. I Honest. love you. You are all I care about. The three of us. That's it. That's all that matters. So I'm going to tell you the truth. You're going to be punch drunk in two years if you keep this up. Think about her when she graduates. What do you want to look like? You got a later truth right now. You say it, don't do it. All right? You say it, don't do it. Come here, baby. 
They're all gonna keep you in that Billy the Great bubble, you know? And they'll take their pound of flesh, but baby, when that bubble pops, they're all just gonna scatter like roaches. And me and Layla are gonna be here to pick up the pieces. Bleed for This is a low-budget biopic that was produced for $6 million. It has a big-time cast that was drawn to the story. Miles Teller plays the real-life Vinny Pazienza. Vinny was an up-and-comer boxer who had a tragic car accident. He's told by doctors that he'll never walk again. He's determined to not only walk again, but to box again. So that's basically the story. Aaron Eckhart stars as his trainer. So he had two big-name stars in this film, and it did very poorly at the box office as well. You looked in the mirror lately? You seen that thing on your head? Come on, you heard what the doctor said. You're risking your life here. What life? Upstairs? No, I can't do it. This is a Hail Mary at best. No, it's, no, it's not. It, it's a gamble. Yeah, I know that. But look, if there was a time to roll the dice, this is it. I mean, you still know how to give up. No, I do. Trust me, I do. I know exactly how to give up. You know what scares the shit out of me, Kev? Is that it's easy. Something goes wrong, I'm involved. I couldn't live with that. Hands of Stone is another biopic. This film focuses on the boxing career of Roberto Duran. Robert De Niro plays his trainer, Ray Arcel, and the singer Usher plays Sugar Ray Leonard. This film was a bust at the box office. It was made for a $20 million budget, was only able to muster $5 million at the box office. <laughs> Maña, oye, eso movimiento. Tú te estás aprendiendo todo lo que tú estás diciendo. Tengo lo que usted me está diciendo. Siempre y cuando me compre mi heladito, cada vez que me tomo esa huevada. ¡Ah, Ofi! ¡Dios mío! ¡Se salió! ¡Uno, dos, tres, cuatro! It was Plomo that first taught Duran to channel his rage and his anger into his boxing. Duran's reputation as the hardest hitting fighter in Panama kept growing. A reputation that would one day earn him the nickname Hands of Stone. Another boxing movie that probably sounded good on paper to some studio executive was Grudge Match. The premise is, is to put two great boxing actors from the Rocky and Raging Bull films into the same film. Yes, I know that Sylvester Stallone and Robert De Niro are two of our greatest actors, but no one really wanted to see them in the ring again in their late 60s. This film too bombed. It had a production price tag of over $40 million and made only $29 million at the box office. You made me wait 30 years to prove to the world I can kick your ass. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick your ass. You're going to move on. Wait, what? Move on. Move, move on. on. Now, now that you got her, you want me to move on? How do you live with yourself knowing that we tied? How do you that there was no grudge match? You never beat me. I was there. No. He, he kicked your ass. He didn't kick my ass. He knew I wasn't ready for that fight. I lost that fight because I was out of shape. The first one, I kicked his ass because I was in shape. You're pathetic. You're pathetic. Tell her. Tell her. He wasn't ready. Yeah. See? And so you were afraid of that third fight. Not even a little bit. I was going to knock you yeah, out. Yeah, come on. Let's do it now, what, then. What, what, look at us. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? Look at us. Yeah, look at us. We're not dead. Everybody's laughing at us. The whole world's laughing That's at right. us. That's right. But we're not dead. We're not dead. In fact, this whole thing has made me feel more alive than ever. You? What about you? Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. This is our last chance. Let's finish this once and for all. Come on. As we've discussed in this course previously, Disney continues to make relatively low-budget sports films that do well at the box office. Two more Disney films in the past few years are Secretariat and Million Dollar Arm. Secretariat is the story of the owner of the 1973 Triple Crown winning horse, Secretariat. It is similar to Seabiscuit in subject matter and tone. It is about the little horse that could. 
and defies all odds of the racing establishment. Million Dollar Arm has John Hamm as a down and out sports agent. He comes up with a scheme to go to India and have a TV contest for what he calls the Million Dollar Arm. In this case, he takes uh, young Indian men who have never played baseball before, but have played cricket, and to see if, who can throw the fastest fastball and then to try to train them to be a major leaguer. All right, tell him half speed. We're just warming up. Not about throwing hard, it's about throwing right. Oh, oh, oh. It's all right, it's all right. Tell him to relax. Tell him to smile. Wow. We might have to tweak that a little bit. Two very strong biopics that did well at the box office and with critics were 42 and Race. 42 tells the story of Jackie Robinson, played by Chadwick Boseman, breaking the color barrier of Major League Baseball. Harrison Ford portrays the crusty Dodgers owner, Branch Rickey. Many thought that he might get nominated for an Oscar as Best Supporting Actor, but he did not. People aren't going to like this. They're going to do anything to get you to react. Echo a curse with a curse and they'll, they'll hear only yours. Follow a blow with a blow and they'll say the Negro lost his temper. Your enemy will be out in force and you cannot meet him on his own low ground. We win with hitting, running, fielding, only that. We win if the world is convinced of two things, that you are a fine gentleman and a great baseball player. Race is the Jesse Owens story. Owens was an Ohio State track athlete who won gold medal medals in the 1936 Berlin Olympics in front of the Nazi war machine and Adolf Hitler himself. Everything I read about this film says that they stayed very true to the actual story of Jesse Owens and Jason Sudeikis in the story, you probably know him from Saturday Night Live, plays Jesse's coach. No, coach. Look, I thought no. this through. Now, come on. You're going, okay? Trust me. Believe me. You're going. That's it. All right? You've worked too hard. All right? If you don't go over there, you're going to feel awful. All right? If you were to pull out now, you... Yeah, I know. I'll regret it for the rest of my life, yeah, right? Exactly. Yes, sir. And my wife, she'll walk out on me because she realizes what a loser I really am. And I'll probably end up drinking myself stupid and tell my coach he gets so sick of the sight of me that he gives me a goddamn job. You got a chance to be a part of history and you're gonna walk away from it, huh? Throw it away? Look, I got people looking at me for an example. What do you mean people? What people, black people? Come on, I don't give a sh about any of that. Yeah, well, you're white. You don't have to. The remaining recent films are noteworthy because they fit the category we have discussed as other sports films. McFarland USA has Kevin Costner back in his stride in a sports film. Here he is a teacher who moves his family to a mostly Mexican-American high school in California. He starts a cross-country team. His Mexican-American students are very reluctant at first, but the end result is a cross-country high school dynasty in California. This too is based on a true story. I like this film a lot because not only does it portray a sport that we don't see very often cross-country, but it also shows the positive side of poor and struggling Mexican-American families that we don't usually see in films. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you know, but if we keep going the way we're going, you guys have a chance to qualify for state. Really? Yeah, really. But it doesn't matter what I think, okay? I can't do it for you. And I don't have to be the one to tell you that the odds are stacked against you, but if you, if you believe in yourselves, and maybe more importantly, you find a way to believe in each other and your teammates, it won't matter what anyone else thinks. That's the beauty of sports. We don't practice to lose, Holmes. I mean, coach. He 
You don't eat the produce, coach. What? You don't eat the produce. First rule of picking, you eat it, you're fired. But I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin Costner's back at it again, and only Kevin Costner can save the Cleveland Browns. In the movie Draft Day, Costner plays the general manager of the Browns. You as the viewer get the Hollywood version of the behind the scenes of NFL Draft Day. Did you just trash my office? Yeah, I'm upset. Well, I don't care if you're upset. If you're upset, call your agent. All right, let him have this conversation. That's what he's there for. No, Sonny, you're gonna talk to me man to man. You owe me that. I owe you? I drafted you. Your dad drafted me. No, Drew, I drafted you because I believed in you. Then why pick Callahan? You know why. Then trade me. I'm gonna do what's best for the team. The best thing for this team this season is me. I remember before the film Concussion was released, it was going to be the major hit against the established NFL. Well, it was part of the process of people starting to examine concussions and football-related injuries, but it did not have much effect at all on the popularity of the NFL. In fact, last 2015, 2014 were the most popular years as far as TV and attendance of the NFL. So it had virtually little, no, no effect at all on the NFL people running the league. In this film, Will Smith plays African doctor Bennett Amalu. He finds a link to football-related concussions and major health issues with players whose career are over. You want to fold up the National Football League? Want to solve the problem? Who are you? What do, what do, you, what do you ask? You're, you're a pathologist. I'm, you, you perform autopsies. You, yes, I'm a mere pathologist. That's it. That's all I am. Do you have any idea the impact of what you're doing? Yes, I do. Do you understand the impact of what you are doing? If just 10% of the mothers in America decide that football is too dangerous for their sons to play, that is it. It is the end of football. Kids, colleges, and eventually, it's just a matter of time, the professional game. Joe, he does autopsies. He's not in the outcome business. He has no business. Do you know what history does to people? Trained physicians who ignore science. Oh, wow. Sir, I am not done. History laughs. If you continue to deny my work, the world will deny my work. But men, your men, continue to die their families left in ruins. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You sure, you sure you want to do this? I would ask you that same question, Dr. Maroon. A couple other noteworthy films are Warrior and Woodlawn, but for two completely different reasons. Warrior is one of the first films about the new popular sport, mixed martial arts. It has all the conventions that are very similar to the boxing film. Here two brothers meet in the final matchup. It did not do well at the box office, however. Woodlawn is significant to note because it is produced on a relatively small budget and financed by Christian producers. This is a new niche in films to produce films for the Christian audience. This movie is similar to the theme of Remember the Titans about a high school and its team that's being forced to segregate in the 1970s and how they come together. We're not gathered here united tonight because of the name of our teams or of our schools, but because of the name above all names, Jesus. I wanted to come here today because five of my players are here. Five of my players that have been mistreated. I play for a team that doesn't even want me or anybody like me. And I have not done enough to stop. Now, at the beginning of this season, my team gave themselves to love. I'm asking you to stand up right now and make a decision to change, to forgive. 
to choose Jesus. What just happened? I went home and I prayed. I want whatever my players have. I believe. I believe and I want to be baptized. Nobody out there knows what's happened with this team. But when you win on this day, they will! Look at the changes to these boys, Owen. But this is a public high school. I want you to stop all religious activities until this board has taken this matter under full review. I think I'm gonna get hit no matter what I do. I got some tough decisions to make. The Jesus Revolution has a symbol. Because there is one way. Are you leading this? No, sir. I was an atheist last week. The kids, they're leading me. The good book says, without a vision, the people perish. I say, go give it to them. Yes, I do. I am one. Well, that gets you up to date in the world of sports movies. I hope you've learned a greater understanding about sports films and films in general. So, next time you sit down with a box of popcorn and click on Netflix, you have me to blame if you start analyzing the film. Hope you enjoyed the course.